This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Okay then, so what we got today then? Well, a couple of handy little tips really uh, about essentially demystifying the fretboard and getting a little bit more note away. I mean, just ask yourself this, how many videos have you seen that I've done or like other YouTubers have done or whatever, where they've been looking at a guitar solo or a piece of music and, you know, the emphasis on, okay, he's landing on this note now because that note is in the underlying chord. Um, you know, it's everywhere. And the reason why many great guitar solos, I mean, take for instance, Hotel California. The reason why that guitar solo sounds so melodic and the reason why it's um, consistently voted as being one of the best guitar solos of all time is because um, the, there's a strong relationship between the notes in the solo and the chords that are going on underneath. You know, the reason why that note sounds good here, but not in the next bar, for example, is because it's in that chord. And you could say exactly Exactly the same about, you know, kind of many guitar solos, Sultans of Swing, Parisian Walkways, pretty much anything that Carlos Santana has ever played. The list goes on and on and on. So, you know, as guitarists, we tend to kind of begin our journey on the guitar by just memorizing shapes and patterns and not really understanding, you know, the, what we're doing, which it, it kind of, it, it works. It gets you off the starting blocks, blocks pretty quick, but it's, you know, it has there are limitations to kind of just memorizing kind of patterns on the neck uh, because eventually your head is full of shapes and patterns and there's no more room to to fit any more in so what i'm going to do now is show you a couple of little tips for learning where the notes are on the neck and figuring out what notes are in chords and then hopefully you can put those ideas together and um you know be a little bit more note aware when you're soloing. Here it is. Right then, the first part of the equation, um, learning where the notes are on the neck. This is something that gets a lot of people bogged down and um, it, it's something that, that there is all sorts of uh, things that you'll find on uh, the internet you know, magical kind of uh, exercises that promise to teach you the uh, the entire fretboard in 30 minutes. And if you've ever tried any of them, you'll know that they don't work, usually. And the reason why they don't work is because you get into the into a mindset of, let's find where all of the F notes are on the guitar. Okay, there's one there, and there's one there, and there's one there, and there's one there, and there, and there, and, there, and so on. And, you know, it's not difficult to, to find the notes when you start looking for them like that, but you're in a mindset of you, you're looking for a specific note. Okay, uh, and then when you actually pick up the guitar and start playing and soloing and stuff, you're thinking more in terms of shapes and patterns and that kind of stuff. And you know, all of that sort of note hunting stuff is in it is in, filed away in a different part of your brain. So I find the the secret really is to kind of bring them both together. Uh, so what we're going to do is take a look at the E minor pentatonic, this old chestnut. Now, first thing we need to do is know what notes are in that scale. And very easy way to remember that because the notes of the E minor pentatonic spell the word badge. And all you've got to do is rearrange those notes into scale order. So take B, A, D, G, E and turn it into E, G, A, B, D. Once you've got that, you've basically got it cracked. Because then all you've got to do is just walk through the scale pattern, uh, saying the names of the notes out loud. E, G, A, B, D. E, G, A, B, D. E, G. And then the next pattern. Okay, I'm going to assume that you know the five pentatonic shapes. If you don't, don't worry. I've put a PDF up on my Patreon page of all five patterns of E minor pentatonic with the notes indicated. Uh, so pattern two of E minor pentatonic, um, it looks like this. <laughs> 
And guess what? It's still the same five notes. The only thing that you're doing different this time is starting at a different point on that five note cycle. So instead of going E, G, A, B, D, it goes G, A, B, D, E. So again, walk through the scale pattern. G, A, B, D, E, G, A, B, D, E, G, A. Then pattern three. Starts on an A note, so again, same five notes, but this time starting on the A. So A, B, D, E, G, A, B, D, E, G, A, B. Pattern four, B, D, E, G, A, B, D, E, G, A, B, D. Pattern five, D, E, G, A, B, D, E, G, A, B, D, E. And how long did that take? Seconds, really. Let's be generous and say a few minutes, maybe five minutes at the very outside. And what you're doing, you see, is you are relating the notes on the neck to patterns that you know on the neck. You're kind of putting these two um, bits of knowledge together. And, you know, within a few weeks at the most, you're going to start knowing pretty well where all of the E's, G's, A's, B's and D's are on the neck. And then what happens is, once you get to the confidence of the fact that this note here, ninth fret on the D string, once you know that that's a, a, a B note, then how much effort really is it to begin to realise that the one, one fret below it is a B flat and the one one fret above it is a C, you know? Uh, then if that's a C and you know that's a D there because, you know, D, E, G, A, B, D, so that's a D note there, uh, that's going to be a, a C sharp there. So th th those kind of gaps between the notes just sort of automatically kind of fill in themselves. And, you know, next thing to do is once you've got kind of got a little bit of a handle on this, I wouldn't suggest doing this straight away. But, you know, like most people, I'm sure, certainly like me, uh, when I'm sat watching TV with the missus, um, I've got a guitar on my lap, and I'm just kind of noodling away and chilling out with the guitar. So um, when the ad break comes on, just start noodling around in E minor pentatonic, you know, the kind of thing. Etc., etc. And then when the ad break's finished, you know, just when your show comes back on, okay, what was that last note I just hit there? Okay, you know, as long as you're kind of staying within that E minor pentatonic and you are just noodling away randomly and you've done this kind of E, G, A, B, D, kind of seeing it out loud kind of thing um, as you're practicing the scale patterns, then you're probably just going to know what the note, what that note was. And, you, you know, you've achieved something then. You've been able to just identify a note that you that you're using when you're playing without having to do that tedious thing of always counting up one fret at a time from the open string. Um, the point of this is that it's, um, you know, you don't have to work out what the notes are that you're playing. You know what the notes are that you're playing because they are E, G, A, B, D. Just get that in, into, your, uh, into your consciousness and as you're playing through the scale patterns, you're naming those locations in the scale patterns. And if you're doing it out loud, it tends to stick in your mind a lot better. Okay, so that is uh, knowing where the notes are on the neck. The next thing is um, knowing what notes are in chords. Let's take a look at an E major chord. There it is. Okay, now, again, if you have some sort of knowledge of uh, note locations, you can walk through that chord shape and think, well, okay, E, B, E, G sharp, B, and E. Um, let's now map those notes out along the length of a single string. We'll use the low E string as it happens. Uh, there's an E note. Uh, there's an, a G sharp note that's in the chord, and there's the B note that's in the chord. Once you kind of map those notes out along the length of a single string, you can see the relationship between them much more clearly. And you can see that the uh, G sharp note is four frets above the E note. And the B note is three frets above the G sharp note. Okay, now you know what notes are in any major chord. You've got the root note, 
then the note 4 frets above that, then the note 3 frets above that. Easy, okay? If I wanted to know what notes are in, oh, let's pick um, a, 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 a supposedly difficult chord, a B-flat chord, okay? So, uh, B-flat note, there is, okay, four frets above B-flat, one, two, three, four, that's a D. And three frets above the D, one, two, three, that's an F. So, B-flat, D, and F. If I play a B-flat chord, uh, I get a B flat note, an F note, another B flat note, a D note, and another F note. It always works. It always tells you what notes are in a major chord. Just remember that root note plus four frets plus three frets. Minor chords, dead easy. Okay, all that happens with a minor chord, let's look at E minor. Okay, there it is. And what's happening in E minor is we've got E, B, E, G, B, and E. So E, G, and B. Um, we've still got a similar kind of relationship. We've got the E note, the root note, and then the G note, E to G, as you can see, is three frets. And then the G up to the B is four frets. Okay? So a minor chord, any minor chord, is root plus three plus four. Major is root plus four plus three. Minor is root plus three plus four. So let's kind of look at any other minor chord. Let's think, oh, I don't know, F sharp minor. There we go. Okay, so it's got an F sharp root note. F sharp, then we go up three. One, two, three, that's an A note. Then we go up four. One, two, three, four, that's a C sharp note. Okay. Of course... If you've already done the kind of pentatonic thing where you're kind of naming the notes on the neck as you're playing them, you're going to be able to do this much easier because you kind of you're able to use the neck as as the sort of ruler that you measure these distances with. Um, but an F sharp minor chord, F sharp plus A plus C sharp. Let's have a look at the chord: F sharp, C sharp, F sharp, A, C sharp, F sharp. Okay, it always works. It's just two simple little numbers. Major is 4 plus 3. Minor is 3 plus 4. This is something that you can practice even when you're not near a guitar. Okay? You can be stood at a bus queue. You could be queuing up at the supermarket. You could be waiting for your turn at the petrol pumps or whatever. And so when you've got that sort of enforced thumb twiddling time, don't dig out your phone and fire up Twittergram or Instaface or whatever. You know, just kind of do a little bit of constructive musical mental arithmetic start figuring out what notes are in this chord what notes are in that chord and the more you do it the better you get at it and the sooner you will just know that an f sharp minor chord is f sharp a and c sharp and that a b flat chord is b flat d and f and so on and so on and then you couple that with your knowledge of where the notes are on the guitar from that pentatonic based exercise and you just start getting this real three-dimensional note awareness of, of what it is that you're playing, which hopefully um, I've impressed upon you the need for or the, the desirability for in enough videos now where I've talked about, you know, this solo sounds melodic because the guy who's playing it is, you know, kind of targeting notes that are in the chords and therefore it, it sounds really good. So there you go, just a couple of little tips that uh, will hopefully uh, enhance your guitar playing without too much effort or head scratching or number crunching. So there you go. Hopefully that doesn't seem too daunting. And as I said in that clip there, there is um, a PDF up on my Patreon page. There's the address, link in the description, with all of the patterns of E minor pentatonic uh, mapped out, uh, showing where all of the notes are in the patterns. As you know, it's just E, G, A, B, D. And the only thing that changes is um, which note you start on and the, you know which note the pattern starts on, basically. So there you go, folks. Hope you found that useful and informative and maybe a little bit inspiring and if you have then please hit the subscription button and the notification bell uh, if you haven't already done so and why not give me a like while you're at it as I say if you're interested in supporting the channel there's the whole Patreon thing $3 a month and you get all of
all of the little extras that go along with these videos and there's a bunch of other ways that you can help me keep the lights on around here all the links are downstairs in the description thank you so much if you're helping out in any of those ways already and thank you in advance if you're thinking about doing it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now